Are you ready for God's word this morning? Man, I'm ready to share with you. You know, we've been uh, talking about blessing and favor. It's a series we're busy with. Want to wrap it up this morning for us. You know, I think for us as human parents, there's no doubt that we want the best for our, our children, isn't that? You really want to see them succeed and you want to see them do well. And if in any way we can, we can help them along, that's exactly what we do as parents. Sometimes, sometimes even too much, isn't there? And God's heart is exactly the same, even more so. And we see it in Scripture. There's so many Scriptures. But, but let me give you, for instance, Jeremiah 29, 11, that we know so well that where God says, He says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans of a hope and a future. That's God's heart. I want you to see that. God's heart is for us. God's heart is to prosper you, to, to promote you, to try and advance you as, as much as He can. And the Apostle Paul confirms this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. You know what that tells me? <laughs> that God is good. And that God wants to be good to his children. No, no eye has seen, no, no, no mind has imagined how good God wants to be to us. That's what he's saying to us. Now, I want to say to you this morning, God has more for you this coming year. I think, I think if God had to show us, it would probably scare us. But here's the thing, and this is what I want you to see. On your own, you will probably not reach everything God has for us. In our own ability, in our own strength, our own intellect, we lack. We don't have what it takes. But when God's favor comes alongside of us, that's where we go further than we could ever do on our own. That's where we start reaching things that you and I would never be able to reach on our own. And so if you don't have God's favor, oh, you can work hard. You can work your guts out. You'll reach a certain level. That's what you'll reach. You can go far. You'll never reach what you can with God's favor. Somebody once said, one touch of God's favor is worth more than a lifetime of labor. One touch of His favor. And so that's you know, when you, when you start experiencing God's favor upon your life, that's when you see doors open that you couldn't open on your own. That's where, you, where, where people are good to you, where you look at it and you think, why? Where, where did that come from? And, and that's where, where, where God will put you in the right place at the right time, where you look at it and you think, what a coincidence. No, <laughs> It was a God incident. God was involved in that. It was favor. So how do we obtain this? I don't know about you. I want, I need, <laughs> I desire God's favor. Absolutely. How do we obtain that? Last week, I gave you two steps, and I want to recap very quickly. And so the first one is you've got to expect God's favor, or you've got to believe for it. it it's the same thing. There's an expectation, there's a, there's a trust, there's a, a belief, all right? The Bible says in Isaiah 30, it says, The Lord earnestly waits, looking and longing to be good to you, who expect and look for and long for His goodness, his favor and his victory. Bit of a mouthful, isn't it? But you know what it's saying is God wants to be good to you, but he's going to be good to the people who have an expectation, who are looking and longing for his favor. So in other words, there's a strong desire for, the, for, for God's favor. God, I need more. Of, God, I cannot do this on my own. Those are the people that what God wants to give favor to. God doesn't only want us to seek His face, but also His favor. Let me, let me show you from Scripture. Psalm 119 says, I sought your favor, how? With all my heart. Not just a little bit, not just casually, 
with all my heart. Second Kings says, but Jehoaz sought the favor of the Lord, and the Lord listened to him. Then Jeremiah 26, did he not fear the Lord and seek the Lord's favor? It's referring to the prophet Micah, by the way. Did he not fear God? We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll explain that just now. Fearing God, what does that mean? Did he not fear God and at the same time seek his, his favor? And so God responds to a heart that's seeking him. That's why Jeremiah 29, 13 says, If you seek me, you will find me. <laughs> if you're casual, you're not going to get it. <laughs> But if you seek me, you're going to find me. I love what it says in Ephesians chapter 3 in the Amplified Bible. Listen to this. It says, Now to, now to him who is able to do super abundantly more than all we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. You know what that's telling me? That tells me that God wants to be good. God's able to be good. He wants to be good to us. But the question is, are you, are you longing for that? Is there something within you that says, man, I need that in my life? You say, but Leonard, you know, I, I, I don't know the, the right people. I don't have the right connections. Well, I have some good news for you. He knows them all, by the way. <laughs> and when the time is right, he'll, he'll have their path cross your path. Just like that. And as that happens, you think, how did that happen? What a coincidence. No, that was a God incidence. There was God involved. You see, when there's favor upon your life, you don't have to play up to people. You don't have to try and manipulate people. When the time is right, you, you commit it to the Lord. What happens? God brings the right people at the right time across your path. Trust God for favor this coming year. Start expecting favor like never before. And so the first step is to expect it. Here's the second step. Start speaking favor. Speak favor. Listen, friends, if you want to see things change in your life, you may want to change what you're speaking. <laughs> we cannot speak negative things over our business over our finances, you know, I'll never be able to, over our children, ah, they'll never, <laughs> yes, they probably won't. <laughs> you can't speak negative like that and expect to see positive results. Come on. You can't speak death and experience and, and, and expect to have life. It's not going to work like that. And so very often we find that our own words are limiting what God wants to do in our lives. Proverbs 6, we looked at it last week. What does it say? You are snared by the words of your mouth. Snared. It means you're trapped. It's holding you back. You're saying the wrong stuff. And so let's be very, very careful what we say. I think one of the best habits you and I can develop, and, and, and I've uh, uh, encouraged you to do this, to wake up in the morning before you even get out of bed, just, just to spend a couple of moments thanking God. Just gratitude. How many of you have been doing that, by the way? Can I see your hands? You've just started your day. Great. Started your day with gratitude. God, thank you for a new day. You know, we take these things for granted. Thank you that, I, that there's a cup of coffee waiting for me just now. God, thank you, favor. Come on. We need to start with that. Thank God for his favor. Right throughout the day, God, thank you that your favor is upon me. You go into a big meeting. You go in just, just under your breath, just whispering, thank you for favor, Lord. Thank you that, that I've been crowned with favor. What are you doing? Are you reminding God? No. You're reminding yourself. And you find every time you speak favor, you say that, you're hearing it. Faith starts welling up on the inside. And the more you speak it, the, the more you speak it, the more you hear it, the more faith wells up on the inside, guess what? The more you're going to find yourself walking in favor. So I, I think it's one of the, the best uh, uh, habits we can develop. You know, one of the young guys here in the church, one of the 20s, went for a job interview some time ago, and it was a great job, and, and, 
and he was so keen to get this job, and he was just speaking favor, and this is my job, and we prayed for him beforehand, and so that week he went for the interview and discovered that he didn't have the, the qualifications nor the experience required, and so he left, man, he was so down and so discouraged, but kept on trusting God. If, if this is not my job, then God has got a better job for me, and he kept on trusting God, and just speaking favor over his life. Well, a couple of days later, they called him and, and, and asked him to come back for another interview. Well, this doesn't make sense. Why would they want to see him? And so he went in, and long story short, he got the job. This made even less sense. And so this was crazy, you know. And so he's working there a couple of days, but this is messing with his mind. How did he get this job? And so within the first couple of days, he had an opportunity to ask one of the managers who was in at the interview, and he said to him, he said, you know, if you don't mind me asking, how did I get this job? Because I didn't seem to have the, the right qualifications. He, he said, you didn't qualify at all. <laughs> Let me just tell you. He, so he says, but, but somehow, somehow, the MD liked you. And he decided to give you, give you this opportunity. Don't mess it up now. I don't know how you got it. <laughs> and so that's what happens when favor is on you. God opens doors that you think, how did that happen? In the natural, it should never happen. But you see, when favor is upon you, supernatural things start happening. And God takes an ordinary situation, ordinary people, and He makes the extraordinary come out of that situation. And so we've got to trust God for that. Now, maybe you're saying, wow, well, Leonard, you know, that, that kind of stuff never happens to me. Can I ask you, are you living favor-minded? Are you expecting favor? Are you speaking favor? Well, you know, I did it last Wednesday and it didn't work. <laughs> I'm talking about living a lifestyle. This is not a flash in the pan kind of stuff I'm talking about. I'm not talking about trying it for a day or trying it for a week. I'm talking about a lifestyle of looking and longing and expecting God's favor. You see, when you and I live with that, with that mindset, when, when we live with that kind of faith and expectation, uh, you know, it's, it, as I say, it's not a flash in the pan, but it's a consistent, unwavering confidence in God, regardless of what's happening in my life. You know, if I'm going through a hard time, it's fine. There's a consistent, unwavering confidence in God, God is going to bring me through this. You see, the mistake that we make, we think that if we go through a little bit of a difficult time, God's favor can't be upon us. But I want to remind you, favor doesn't exclude you from going through difficult time. It doesn't exempt you from troubles and difficulties. Remember last week we looked at Nehemiah and how God's favor was upon him. Amazing. <laughs> Yet, he had so many enemies, so many people coming against him and, and trying to block him, trying to frustrate. And, and in spite of that, he reached everything God, God wanted him to do. And he rebuilt that wall in, in record time. What about David? David says this in Psalm 41. He says, the favor of God, listen to this, keeps my enemies from triumphing over me. Notice it doesn't say... It keeps my enemies from me. It keeps my enemies from triumphing, from being victorious. So in other words, what David is saying, I still have enemies. You see, it's God's favor that can turn your situation around. When you have enemies, there are people coming against you. There are people trying to push you down and, and hold you back. But God takes that situation and God can turn that situation around. God can settle the storms in our lives. That's what, what favor does. Think about Daniel. Did Daniel have favor? Oh, absolutely. He had so much favor on his life that God sent an angel to him. And the angel appeared to him and said, Daniel, oh Daniel, greatly beloved of God. That's how much favor Daniel had upon him, his life. But, but you see, favor didn't keep him from trouble. You remember the trouble and the stuff Daniel went through and the lion's den and, and all of that and the persecution? 
didn't keep him from trouble. But the favor caused him to rise above the trouble. What about Joseph? Did Joseph have favor? Oh, you want to see a guy in Scripture? I mean, you read it again and again and again. And the, and the hand of the Lord was on Joseph, meaning favor. <laughs> and again, you say, and, they, and, 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 and Joseph found favor with the Lord. And yet he went through so many uh, 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 troubles and stuff. Favor didn't keep him from trouble. <laughs> but it's favor that caused him to become the second most powerful person in, in, in that nation. How does a foreigner, an immigrant, become the prime minister? It doesn't happen, except if there's favor upon your life. So listen to what the Bible says here. In Genesis 39, the Lord was with him. And he showed him kindness and granted him favor. Now listen, you may have people trying to push you down, hold you back, talking behind your back, or all of that, just like Joseph's brothers did with him when they threw him in that pit and they thought he was done. I want to say to you, don't worry about that. God sees what's happening. When the time is right, God will put you, pull you from that pit. And it becomes a pit stop, meaning it's not permanent. All right? It's temporary. And God put you back on track again. And you can, you can fulfill everything that He has for you. You see, when God's hand is upon us, nobody can hold us back. When God says it's time to go, it's time to go. Uh, nobody can, can hold you down when God's favor is upon your life. You know, I hear parents sometimes, they're so concerned for their children. Oh, you know, I don't know how my children are going to find work in this country. They, they're never going to be able to. While well, saying that stuff, they probably won't. But the way I look at it, there's so much favor upon my life. My children are going to, are going to be mighty in the land. Isn't that what the Bible says in Psalm 112? Let me read it to you. It says, Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in His commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Isn't that beautiful? They will be blessed. Why? Because we're walking an upright life before God. Not a perfect life, but we're serving God, and we know there's favor upon our lives. So remember, we're talking about speaking favor. I've digressed a little bit. I've shared with you quickly what happens when, when we go through bad times, when we go through tough times. Because some people think, oh, and then God's favor can't be upon us. No. You still trust God for favor. You still speak favor because it's favor that's going to get you through that tough time where you come out victorious. All right. Now, let me end this thought quickly, speaking on favor. When you go and have a look at Numbers chapter 6, there's a, you'll find a portion of Scripture there. It's called the priestly blessing. I find it fascinating, amazing, because it's a blessing that the priests would speak over. And the first one to do it was Aaron, the high priest, Moses' brother. They would speak over the people. But what I find fascinating is the fact that God gave it to him. God said to him, I want you to speak this over the people. The Lord bless you and keep you. You know that song that we sing? The Lord make His face shine upon you and enlighten you, giving you favor. Why did God want him to pray that? Why didn't God just bless them? If that was God's heart, which we know it is, why didn't God just go ahead and bless them? Because favor and blessing needs to be released. It needs to be spoken out. And so you and I need to make sure that we say the right things, all right? So let's move on to the next one quickly. How do we obtain God's favor? Number one, you've got to expect it. You've got to speak it. Number two, and here's the third one, you've got to live a godly life. You've got to live a godly life. You see, there's a responsibility on you and me. This is what I want to share with you quickly this morning. Now, in Genesis chapter 6, we read the account of Noah. Noah lived during a time where sin and wickedness abound in the earth. So much so that God got to the place where He said, I'm going to wipe everything out. Animals, people, I've, I've had enough. 
Listen to it quickly. Let me read it to you. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and He saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. Almost, it almost kind of sounds like the world we're living in at the moment, where people do whatever they want to do, and whatever they think is right, people are doing today. All right. So the Lord was sorry He had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke His heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I've created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the air. I am sorry I've ever made them. But... Here's the next verse. But Noah found favor with the Lord. Why? How come he had favor? The next verse tells us, verse 9, Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on the earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. The only blameless person. Notice it doesn't say faultless. There's a big difference. Faultless is where there's perfection. Nobody on the face of this earth is perfect except Jesus was, but not us. But we can walk, we can walk blameless. How do we do that? When you know there's stuff in your life that's not right, and you keep living that way, and you make excuses, and you try and that's sin. That's not blameless. But if you know there's stuff in my life that's not right, and you say, Lord, that's me, and today I repent, then God sees us as blameless. And God would look upon you and me the same way as what He looked upon, upon Noah. And so you, when you and I do that, when we deal with stuff in our lives that's not right, that's honoring God. And Scripture tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 2 that if, if we honor God, God will honor us. Now let me give you five more Scriptures. I'm going to give you a couple of Scriptures this morning. And then I'm done, I promise. I'm going to give you five more Scriptures, but I want to show you from Scripture this morning how important it is that you and I live godly lives, that we live in the fear of the Lord. What does it mean, by the way, to to live in the fear of the Lord. Does it mean we're scared of God? No, not really. The fear of the Lord, according to Proverbs chapter 8, means to, to hate evil. So when you say somebody lives in the fear of the Lord, man, they hate evil. I don't want to I, I even watch those movies. I can watch it, but you know what? It's evil. I, I don't need that in my life. I, I, I don't want to do those kind of business transactions because, because that's evil. That's walking. I don't, I don't want to use that kind of language because that's filthy. I wouldn't do it in the front in church and I'm not going to do it in the front of my yard or anywhere for that matter. Because if that's the kind of attitude we have, that's walking in the fear of the Lord. Now listen to this. It says, how great is the goodness you've stored up for those who fear you. There's goodness and favor stored up for those who fear the Lord. Proverbs 11, the Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor with Him. Let, let me just quickly explain that. In Bible times, they would use scales, and they would weigh the produce or the goods, and you would pay according to weight. And if the store owner or, or, or businessman was a bit crooked, they would maybe tamper with the scales. And you would pay more than what you should. And what Scripture is saying, God detests that. Another translation actually says, and this is strong, God hates, not dishonest scales, dishonest people. God hates, not just that behavior, but those kind of people. When you and I walk in dishonesty... Don't think, don't think you can be slightly dishonest in business. God's favor is going to be upon you this year. 
It doesn't work that way. But when you and I get to the place where we say, you know what? We used to do this. We used to do that. God, I, I realize that's wrong. And I repent today. And I turn away from that because that's what repentance is. is where we actually turn from our wicked ways. And I say, I'm not operating like that. And I remember making a decision like that years ago in business where, where I came before the Lord and I said, God, we used to do this, but this thing has been bugging me. And from today, and I'm telling you, I can show you from that day on, our turnover just climbed. You see, sometimes we think, you know, we can scanave a little bit and we can make a little bit of money and we make a little bit of money but we have no clue how much we're losing out on because we're losing on the favor of God. <laughs> I want God's favor. Let me quickly share with you. Last three scriptures quickly. Psalm 84. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. What does the sun do? Sun brings life. What does a shield do? Protects. So the Lord is, is, brings life. He protects. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does He withhold from who? from those whose walk is blameless. You see that same walk, same word again? When we walk blameless before God, there's, there's no good thing does He withhold. Life, protection, favor, honor. Uh, Isaiah 66, listen to this. These are the ones I look on with favor. Who, Lord? <laughs> those who are humble. Remember I said just now, stay humble. Just Let's stay humble before the Lord. Those who are humble and contrite in spirit, that means a repentant heart, and who tremble at my word. So in other words, if God's word says it, I accept it, I believe it, and I obey it. I, I tremble. There's the fear of the Lord. All right? And so what it's saying is God blesses those have that kind of attitude. They are the ones I look on with favor. Second Chronicles, here's the last one quickly. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. And so I want to say to you this morning, favor is not for those who are casual. It's not for those who are casual about the Word, Casual about obedience. Casual about their relationship with the Lord. <laughs> Favor is for those who've made a decision. I want to serve God. And I'm not going to do it half-heartedly. I'm going to do it with all of my heart. And so let me, let me wrap this up for us today. What I've shared with you here this morning is not a magic formula. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of expecting it speaking it and living it living a godly life if you don't live a godly life you can speak it and expect it till the cows come home <laughs> but favor is not going to come home there's a responsibility on you and me to live a godly life not a perfect life a blameless life sin and favor do not coexist Compromise? It's just a little bit of compromise. It's not that bad, Leonard. Okay. It doesn't go with favor. You can forget it. So I want to give you opportunity this morning. If while I've been speaking, there's something on your heart where you just realize the lights have gone on, like it did years ago for me when I was in business, where I realized I'm doing stuff that God's not smiling upon. And I put it off and I made excuses, I'm telling you, for a long time. Until I got to the place where I said, this is not right. And I drew the line. And God's favor just came upon us. And I'm in a place where I never want to lose that again. I, I, I want to see God's favor. Because you know what I've experienced? When God's favor is upon you, it's upon my children. It's upon our staff. It's upon this church. So I just... I need His favor. And I want to walk humbly before God. And so I want to ask you, don't, don't stand. Just bow your heads.
won't you bring that thing to the Lord? I don't know what it is. It may be stuff that you're watching on the internet. It may even, it may even be something as simple as, as movies. That's not good. It may be an affair that you've been busy with. It may be stuff in your business where you're putting through expenses you shouldn't be putting through. You're taking cash you shouldn't be and you haven't been declaring and you're not paying your taxes, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. You know what it is and God knows what it is. And if you're at the place this morning where you say, God, I'm done with this. I'm drawing a line and I'm repenting and I'm saying, God, I'm sorry. And I'm turning away from that. That will not happen in my life again. And from today, I'm asking, Lord, for your favor upon my life. God, I need your favor. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for the plans you have this coming year. Thank you for, for everything ahead of me. God, I don't want to miss that because of sin and compromise and stupidity. I want everything you have. And so I want to walk, Lord, blameless before you from this day on. Help me now. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Bless you.